Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about general features and attachments of the talus. Now this is second largest tarsal bone. So when you see an articulated foot, you can clearly make out that calcaneus is the largest one and second largest one is the talus. So in front it is connected to the navicular bone that is forming pre-talar joint. This joint also involves part of sustentaculum tela and spring ligament. So this is pre-talar joint. Below it articulates with calcaneum to form sub -talar joint and above it articulates with tibia and fibula and together they form ankle joint that is also termed as supra -talar joint so all around it is having three joints supra -talar, sub -talar, and pre -talar joints and one peculiarity of talus is it is devoid of any muscular attachment so it is all around having joints and it is having attachments of ligaments only regarding points of site determination the talus is having three parts head it is globular facing forward constricted neck and the body the body is having a convex trochlear articular facet it is situated upward and below it is having a single concave articular facet so it should be placed like this so it can be right or left similarly this is another talus now once you know these many points then you'll have to see for the body so along the medial aspect of the body it is having coma shaped articular facet whereas along the lateral surface it is having a triangular articular facet so obviously this will be medially this will be laterally and if you put it on a flat surface then this is right talus similarly if you see this talus so this is head this is neck this is body and this is under surface and uh, this is the superior surface now when you see it from side this is the coma shaped articular facet it should be facing medially and this triangular shaped articular facet should face laterally so obviously this is left talus so this is how you can determine side of the given talus now let's see general features of the talus as we have discussed it is having head neck and body so let's first see the head now in front it is having a convex articular facet see over here and that is generally directed forward medially and slightly downward and that will articulate with corresponding articular facet found along the proximal aspect of the navicular bone this is right navicular bone and these two are connected like this and below the head is supported by the spring ligament and together these three will form talocalcaneo navicular joint which is ball and socket variety of synovial joint so let's see the same in articulated foot so here you can see this is the globular head and that is connected to the navicular bone from below there is presence of spring ligament now under surface of the head the same thing we'll discuss regarding spring ligament so the under surface of the head is having three articular facets anterolateral middle and posterior articular facet the posterior facet is very large so there are three articular facets along the under surface of the head now the three articular facets will come in contact with corresponding articular facets of the dorsal surface of the calcaneum so over here will be the attachment of or connection of the anterolateral articular facet of the talus over here now this is sustentaculum talli of the calcaneus so over here will be the anterolateral articular facet will come in contact so this is the anterolateral articular facet now if i join these two together you will clearly see that this is the anterolateral articular facet and that comes in contact with this anterior articular facet of the calcaneum okay this is anti articular facet so these two are connected like this now middle articular facet of the talus will come in contact with spring ligament so this gap between the sustentaculum talli and navicular bone this portion is having attachment of spring ligament so that spring ligament will come in contact with this middle articular facet of the talus and as I told you the posterior articular facet is very large and that will come in contact with the rest of the sustentaculum talli over here. See this if I connect these two together you can clearly make out that the posterior large articular facet is in contact with the remaining articular facet along the sustentaculum talli like this. 
now next to the head is a neck it is a constricted part see this particularly along the dorsal aspect you can clearly see the constriction now the direction of the neck is downward forward and medially so if you see it from in front you can clearly make out that the neck is inclined downward and it is deviated towards medial aspect so it is directed downward forward and medially and if you see the long axis of the body and if you compare it with the long axis of the neck so obviously there is formation of an angle between these two that is termed as neck body angle and that is approximately 150 degree in case of adult and 130 to 140 degree in case of children so the acuteness of the neck body angle in case of children is seen in the form of more inversion so the foot in case of children is more inverted as compared to the adults now the neck along the dorsal aspect distally it is providing attachment to capsular ligament of the ankle joint and dorsal talonavicular ligament so if i connect navicular bone again like this so from over here the dorsal talonavicular ligament will extend to the dorsal aspect of the navicular bone now rest of the dorsal aspect of the neck is included within the joint cavity of the ankle joint and along the lateral aspect over here the neck provides attachment to anterior talofibular ligament now in case of habitual squatters over here in this region of the neck there is a presence of squatting facet now this secondary facet is produced just because the habitual squatters they do extreme dorsiflexion during the act of squatting so if i connect the lower end of the tibia so this anterior border of lower end of tibia will come in contact with that particular part of the neck during extreme dorsiflexion during the act of squatting like this and that will produce a squatting facet over here so if i join it again like this and just imagine extreme dorsiflexion so that anterior border will produce a facet over here now along the under surface of the neck there is a depressed non-articular area and that is termed as sulcus telli. now this will come in contact with corresponding sulcus found along the dorsal surface of the calcaneum and that is termed as sulcus calcani so when we join these two together and when we see it from lateral aspect these two sulci they are in contact with each other and these two sulci together they form a blind track this is termed as sinus tarsi okay so above there is sulcus telli below there is sulcus calcani and together they are forming a sinus that is termed as sinus tarsi now this will provide attachment to introsious talocalcanal ligament medially and cervical ligament laterally so along the under surface within the sulcus telli there is attachment of these two ligaments now next is body which is cuboidal in shape and it is having five surfaces namely dorsal plantar medial lateral and posterior surfaces now the dorsal surface is articular and it is having a convex articular facet this is termed as trochlear articular facet just because it is convex from before backward and concave from side to side and this will come in contact with under surface of the lower end of the tibia and that will form part of ankle joint like this now if you see it from above the medial border of this surface is straight whereas the lateral border is directed forward and laterally and so that the anterior part of the trochlear surface is broader as compared to the posterior part now next is medial surface it is articular above and non-articular below the upper articular area is coma shaped and that will come in contact with corresponding articular facet found along the medial malleolus so this is medial malleolus and along its lateral aspect deep inside there is a corresponding articular facet and these two together will articulate to form part of ankle joint see this this is how they are connected now the lower non-articular part of the medial surface will provide attachment to deep fibers of the deltoid ligament and that is also termed as anterior tibiotella ligament now next is lateral surface it is having a triangular articular facet 
so main portion of the lateral surface is articular only small portion is non articular and that triangular articular facet is having apex facing downward and base facing upward now this will come in contact with corresponding articular facet found along the medial aspect of lateral malleolus of the fibula so this is fibula and this is its lower end and this is malleolar fossa and in front of it this is the corresponding triangular articular facet now these two together will come in contact with each other and they form part of ankle joint like this so the ankle joint is contributed by tibia and fibula above and talus below with its medial superior and lateral surfaces now the lower and posterior small non articular area of lateral surface this one this will provide attachment to inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament now next is posterior surface now when you see it from above it looks like a process and sometimes it is termed as posterior process of the talus it is having a small medial tubercle and large lateral tubercle and in between these two there is an oblique groove now this groove is clearly appreciated when you see it from behind so over here you can clearly see the groove and this is lodged by tendon of flexor hallucis longus the medial tubercle in upper part provides attachment to superficial fibers of deltoid ligament they are also termed as posterior tibiotalar ligament and below it is providing attachment to posterior talocalcanal ligament the lateral tubercle provides attachment to posterior talofibular ligament so anterior talofibular ligament is attached to the lateral aspect of the neck whereas posterior talofibular ligament is attached to this lateral tubercle of talus now under surface is having a single large concave articular facet now that will come in contact with posterior articular facet along the dorsal surface of the calcaneum see this and these two together will form subtalar joint like this so as we have discussed below there is formation of subtalar joint above with this trochlear surface and medial and lateral articular surfaces there is formation of ankle joint that is supratalar joint and in front with navicular there is formation of pretalar joint so all around it is having joints now let's quickly revise the attachments of the ligaments all around the talus so along the dorsal surface of the neck anteriorly there is attachment of joint capsule of ankle joint and it is also providing attachment to dorsal tail or navicular ligament over lateral aspect of the neck there is attachment of anterior talofibular ligament along the small posterior part of the lateral surface here this portion is providing attachment to inferior transverse tibiofibular ligament now lateral tubercle of the talus provides attachment to posterior talofibular ligament and medial tubercle of the talus in upper part provides attachment to superficial fibers of the deltoid ligament and in the lower part there is attachment of posterior talocalcanal ligament the lower non articular part of the medial surface of body provides attachment to deep fibers of the deltoid ligament and within the sinus tarsi there is introsseous talocalcanal ligament medially and cervical ligament laterally so this is how all around it is providing attachment to the ligaments regarding deltoid ligament it is having two fibers superficial and deep the superficial fibers are having three types of fibers anterior middle and posterior the anterior fibers are principally attached to the navicular tuberosity the middle fibers are attached throughout the course of sustained tubercular talus and posterior fibers they are also termed as the posterior tibiotalar fibers they are attached to this medial tubercle of talus the deep fibers they are also termed as anterior tibiotalar fibers they are attached to this non articular area along the medial surface so this is how all around the deltoid ligament is attached so this is regarding general features and attachments along the talus hope you understood well thanks for watching